Hope you weren't a fan of drones before, because you're definitely going to be a fan of them now. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Michael Blambulance, or L.A. Ambulance. This is actually a remake of a, a European film that was made apparently with $7, and this movie was made with $70 million, or something along that lines. This film follows... Okay, I'm not gonna try and pronounce his name because I know I'll fucking butcher it. Black Mantra from Aquaman. He's a war vet who's trying to find the means of helping his wife through her medical operation. He can't get any kind of support from the medical system, even though he's a veteran, so he goes to his estranged adopted brother, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, who I think is trying to toe the line of how Nicolas Cage came off in Face Off. The performances are eerily similar. Little does he know that he is immediately pulled into a bank robbery. And of course things go wrong, they have to take this ambulance hostage with a cop that one of them shot earlier, while the paramedic inside is trying to help the wounded officer at the same time, also trying to survive the situation. And while these guys are being chased, by the cops and they're on this very merry opposite of OJ chase throughout the streets of Los Angeles with a lot of cool car chase scenes, lots of cool explosions, and a finale that actually kind of has some levity to it in terms of what we're used to from Bay. First off, I'll have to say I think the performances from Black Mantra and the Manic are good. I think those two are good. Jake, I kind of go back and forth on. There's times where he'll be really, really great, and then there's other times where he's chewing the scenery so badly it's eating into my own face. The opening I would find is kind of the most unnerving about it. It's the most odd. There are some moments where there's the Michael Bay stupid humor is thrown in. That is actually far less than it should be, especially in a movie like this. I find that he really toned down on that, but that's because Every time he can find a way to use an FPV drone, he'll do it. The way he incorporated into this film, I actually think that this will be used in action films in the future because I have not seen it used on this scale. Obviously they'll use drone shots for establishing whatnot, but FPV drones are a much different breed of animal. These are drones that have cameras on them that can go upwards to 180 kilometers an hour. They can zip. You've probably seen a few videos of people doing these little tricks through these courses in these abandoned buildings like going up through pipes, going down through smokestacks, coming out of windows, through holes in the ground and all that these guys are professionals and he hired one he hired a professional drone racer to do a lot of the shots in this film there's one in particular where the ambulance is going through this big empty gravel lot and the drone passes underneath this building that has it's kind of an abandoned concrete thing that's got these corridor bars and as it's passing through it will pass then in front of the ambulance as it skids around it goes past it and then there's another one where it goes underneath a cop car after the cop car is going off of this very small lip in the ground it's amazing i don't know how many cameras and drones they had to kill to get some of these shots but i imagine it was a few so if you're wanting to see this film from a very fast-paced visual standpoint, I would highly suggest it just for this reason. Not only are these drones used outside, but they're also used inside buildings sometimes. I don't know why you wanted to try that, but sure. Bay really does try to do something different in terms of the visual experience with this film, and I will give him credit for that. The guy is always trying to do something different in terms of a shot. He is very rarely static. He is always a kinetic camera in motion. And now with drones at his disposal, you bet you I am just really excited to see whatever his next movie is. He will probably shoot the entire movie on drones. But in terms of the story, I feel it's kind of decent. It admittedly goes on way too long. I think that even though that this film does have a pretty okay pacing to it, I feel that it still drags out this story way too long. There's a few bits that they could have cut out and made it a little bit more precise. Because there's this entire element with this Mexican gang cartel that's kind of thrown into the end of the film that you almost didn't even need to have in there. You just needed to so you could have an explosion. But I still do like how the movie ends. I actually was quite surprised by that ending. And I think that it makes it a lot more of a unique film than what you're used to from the baster. Are you seeing this movie for story? No. But is there one in there? Yes, actually, surprisingly enough. Are you watching it for the character acting? No. Is there some decent? Eh, a little bit. Are you watching this for the action cinematography and the explosions and the car chases, yes. For a film that's also like 90% car chase, they do a really good job of constantly creating this sense of what the hell is going on, this confusion. It makes you really in 
embedded into this car chase and it makes it look way better than it probably would because realistically it wouldn't be this entertaining. In the end, I'm going to give Blambulance a 4 out of 7, a very generous 4 out of 7, but I feel that it was an enjoyable movie and I would watch it again purely to see the drone shots and all of the cinematography that went into that. It would actually be really interesting to see some of the behind the scenes. There already is some of that on YouTube, so I would definitely suggest you guys check that out. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.